What's up guys, it's a Swingman here, back with another upload, and today, we're gonna gain some bat speed. So I just got back from vacation yesterday, had a wonderful time with family, got to spend some time with the new nephew. His first ball! <laughs> <laughs> He's the coolest little dude, definitely gonna be a stud athlete someday. So getting into it, basically what we're gonna do today is break down how we're gonna increase our bat speed now. This has been a very highly requested video to make. If we could take the mindset that we're more concerned about exit velocity and control, that's what's gonna make our quote unquote bat speed increase, yet become more effective and help us become a better baseball player altogether. Because it's great, it's awesome to be able to swing a bat very hard, but it's even greater if you can make solid contact and actually see the numbers show up when they're measuring exit velocity. That is a highly measured aspect of the game now. It wasn't when I was coming up and trying to get recruited to go to colleges and play professional ball, but now it definitely is. So first of all, what we're gonna do is break it down. Basically, we have our workouts that we're gonna do in the gym. We have our stuff we're gonna do in the cage, our batting practice rounds, all right? So these are routines we're gonna do in each of those. So that's gonna help us get our body behind the ball and also help us train and control our hands as we put all that work into the gym, into the cage. And then we also have the stuff we could do at home every day as well. So all these things are gonna be routines to help us build what we would call a faster swing and create better exit velocity overall. So first of all, starting with our workout program. Some things you wanna make sure you add into your workout schedule is explosive workouts. So the way I structure my normal workout is my six to eight weeks in the winter time. So right now, actually, I have some of my students that are working on this right now. You want to get your strength levels as high as you can. So it's important that we have strength. However, that isn't the, the answer to all of it. Just because you could bench a lot or squat a lot doesn't mean you could hit the ball any harder than you did before you started working out. Okay, so we need to take all of that strength and turn it into explosive energy. So if you have a workout program right now that you're, you're seeing the increases in the bench and the squats, you're seeing an increase in that, but you're not seeing much of an increase in your hitting velocity or your comfort in the plate, one thing you wanna add to your workouts is explosive training. So for example, if you're just doing squats or leg press, you wanna make sure you mix in squat jumps. So what this is gonna do is help you add an explosive workout to your actual workout. So again, why you're, you have to ask yourself why you're training. We are all training to become better baseball players, so we need to direct that energy into baseball. So if we add these explosive movements to our workouts, those explosive movements will transfer into our game. So adding a set of 15 to 20 squat jumps after you're done with your actual squats, that will help build those fast twitch muscles and that explosive training. If you're doing bench press, you wanna make sure that you're exploding up, okay? We're not just slowing down all the way through the, the process. Yes, it makes us look bigger. We could, you know, look more menacing at the plate, but we wanna make sure we're driving those weights up, okay? This is gonna help us get those explosive, like I said, muscles working. Also in the gym, what's important that we work out is our core. To break it down easily for you guys, we got the middle of our body and we got the sides. The sides are your obliques. These obliques take a beating when we play baseball. And the stronger that we could get our obliques, it's gonna help us with our swing. So when you're doing your core workouts or your ab workouts, you wanna make sure you mix in good oblique workouts. Now some you wanna work in would be ones that imitate a baseball swing. So when you're grabbing a cable and rotating to make sure that that 
oblique is getting a nice rotation and a nice pull and you're working on those areas that you would when you're doing your normal swings. Medicine ball tosses, going from the side and throwing out, okay, and getting that nice rotation in our core, those are also good things we could do. And adding in reps of 20 for three sets uh, in your core workout, making sure you're doing it three to four times a week, that's huge and that's very important. That's gonna carry into your swing. These are all routines that you guys should be doing with your workouts. So I'm not walking you through full workouts. I will have workout videos coming up soon, but these are strictly for bat speed. And this is something easily tomorrow you could add right into your normal workout schedule. That's what we wanna do at the gym. Make sure you're getting your plyometrics, your explosive workouts added into your normal routine because all these things will transfer over when you're starting to swing a bat. All right, so number two, we're going into the cage. All right, so now when we're in the cage, we gotta understand a few things. This is the, this is the most important area that we're gonna see the biggest gains when it comes to developing bat speed and increasing our exit velocity. So we wanna make sure that we're training the correct way and that we're not just trying to swing a bat as hard as we can, all right? We wanna understand how to use every single part of our body to generate and create acceleration with this part of the bat. <laughs> to square up that ball. So that's what's most important, all right? So there's a couple of drills here that we could add into your routine when you're in the cage. Number one, one hand drills. We're using weighted bats here. For me, I like to use a weighted bat to start. I am choking up, but you can work your way down the bat to help start challenging yourself. Now what we're doing is making sure we control that barrel hitting the ball. Now we're not trying to smoke the ball, but what we're doing is strengthening our forearms and making sure that everything's under control. All right, so now we get our reps with our bottom hand, now we get reps with our top hand, all right? So when we do these, we wanna to try to mimic what we're trying to do with our swing. We're keeping that barrel nice and tight to us here, and we're throwing the knob first and barrel follows, and we're just hitting nice little line drives, ground balls, up the middle or maybe slightly to your opposite side, all right? So this is just training your hands because ultimately when you start hitting a ball correctly, your hips lead your hands. And what happens is when you start rotating, exploding through the zone, our hands follow our hips and now it's controlling from there. So if we have strong hands that could control a barrel, it's gonna make everything come together. So now that's what we're gonna do with our hands to make sure we're training our hands correctly. When you're doing your normal T work, Add the weighted bat to it, all right? So make sure you're getting your reps with your weighted bat and also with your normal game bat, all right? So that's important. Now we're strengthening, again, strengthening our wrists, our forearms, and our barrel control, switching bats. Now with our lower half of the body, this is where I see most hitters lack in their swing, all right? They might go through the motions that look like they're using their lower half, their back toes up, their hips are rotating through the zone, but they're not actually driving. There's a difference between the two, okay? We don't wanna just turn to the ball. We wanna drive that back hip to the ball, all right? So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit here. So when I'm in my stance right here, I'm gonna make sure this hip drives in the direction I'm hitting the ball, all right? So if I'm hitting the ball oppo, boom, I'm popping that back hip directly at the ball, all right? This is gonna help me get my body behind the ball. So when we get our body behind the ball, it's gonna help us generate more exit velocity. All right. On an extreme comparison, it's like taking a Prius that's going 60 miles an hour and running it into a wall, all right? Obviously, that's gonna be a lot of energy transferring the wall. You take that same 60 mile an hour, but make it into a pickup truck, that's gonna hit that wall harder. Even though it's going the same speed, that's our bat speed, all right, if you have more energy behind it, it's gonna create more energy into the object it's hitting, which is the baseball. So if that helps you guys understand, what I'm talking about is my 220 pound frame is useless if my hands are behind me here, all right? I need to make sure that my body and my head get behind that baseball so my hands could travel, that barrel's gonna whip around and smack that ball out of the park, all right? So that's what I'm trying to do in the cage. So with our lower half, again, we wanna make sure we get that drive. Another way to increase our lower half drive is to work from a no stride position, 
All right, so we wanna make sure we could stay under control. Our legs are underneath us, so they're nice and wide. Our knees are bent, our hips are pushed back. Okay, and we're driving that ball from a no stride position, finishing balanced, okay? Balance is key to everything, all right? We gotta make sure we stay balanced when we do all these drills. So now we're done with the workouts, we got our extra work in the cage, and now we're at home. When you're at home, here we go. We got our heavy bat right here with us, and what you could do is simple forearm workouts. Basically what we're doing with our weighted bat, now this only you do with your weighted bat, we could grab it starting with the middle, and we do our rotations here, we do our rotations here. All these you can do for sets from 20 to 25. And then also, as you get better and better at it, we could start sliding towards the handle. Now it gets a lot heavier and we do our rotations, all right? And other ones we could do, we could do them from back here, all right? And then we could do them also up front here, all right? And then you're gonna start feeling that burn in your wrists and your forearms. So that's gonna help get those big MOB forearms that you're looking for. Another workout you could do with the weighted bat at home is just go right here, all right? Make sure you have enough space to do this. Uh, make sure you're not hitting anything. So we're right here, and basically we're just going to contact, all right, with our weighted bat, right there, okay? And we're just stopping our bat. So now we're feeling that contact point out in front of us, and we're strengthening our forearms here, all right? And we're also creating good habits. We got palm up, palm down at contact. We're not rolling through our wrists. We're right here, staying behind the barrel, behind the ball. All right, so that's stuff you can do at home every day. All right, that makes it really easy for you to add that into your routine. I use that word a lot because it should be a routine. If three weeks from now you're not noticing a difference, exit below off the gun, it's because it's three weeks. All right, it's just like any workout. You're not gonna notice those gains that fast. You do this from now all the way until spring training starts, all the way up to your first game, I promise you, you will be hitting the ball harder than you were today. And that's what it's all about right there. These three things between our workouts, our cage work, and our at-home workouts, I promise you, you're gonna gain exit velo. And that's the biggest thing is exit velo. If you guys have any questions at all, please message me. You can comment on this video. Hit that like button and subscribe. I hope this video does help you guys out. If you haven't already, please check out my launch angle video and my T drills. I will leave them in the description below. Also check out my rhythm and timing. That's what ties this all together. I can't emphasize that enough in my videos. Rhythm and timing is key. Take all this stuff, make it with perfect rhythm and timing. You're gonna be a better hitter. Again, thanks for watching guys. Hit that like button and subscribe. How am I gone?